Good morning, Jane. You're my first one to join. I'm gonna give a couple of minutes for other people to be able to join in. just ready to get started. Thank you, Tammy. Hello, Christine. Well, we've got a few people already on here, so I think it's safe to start. Um, for those of you who watched the first video of the matte paint, that's how it turned out. Let me. It looks kind of like an etching. This is all fired on and, and looks matte. I've masked off all the areas where there's matte paint and also I've put red resist over the over the poinsettias so that I don't get any luster on them but I think I let the resist dry a little too much because it's starting to to lift right right there so to work with lusters, I've found that the only thing that works for me to make them flow is turpentine. And I've put some in this little container. I really don't like working with turpentine because it's it bothers me. It gives me a headache. So... I keep a candle lit to at least help burn the fumes a little bit. Also with the flow um, luster or drip luster, I put a large tile underneath. This is a big porcelain tile that I have under here because if it drips, it's easier to clean. It, it won't come out of the my table cover. So this I can just wipe off with denatured alcohol and keep my work area clean. Because I'm doing my uh, poinsettias in a... Oh, thank you, Bella. Um, in cool colors, because I, I'm not much of a red Christmas. I'm more of a modern Christmas, so I did the turquoise, and I'm going to do a little bit of gold and... Um, silver on there I decided to go with the mother of pearl luster these are from porcelana pew which I love the amount of, of color that they flow so nice they stay really liquid this is the rosa lila I'm oh, sorry And I'm going to use a little bit of gray. Hola, Daniela, ¿cómo estás? Hello, welcome everyone. Hi, Hala. And another thing I will be using is a straw. And of course, my little um, 
knife. So, what I will do now, I think I want to put the darker or the gray color. I hope everyone can see because I can't read while I'm doing this. But I've actually tried doing this with the tur turpentine and it didn't work. So, I mean the, the paint thinner. And unfortunately, turpentine is the only thing that really works for this. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the gray and I'm just gonna put it right there. And then we don't use a brush, we don't use anything but the palette knife. And I'm going to go right in here in the areas where it would be darker, where I want more contrast. With lusters, a little goes a long way. You don't want it to get crackly or to, to chip off. So see, that was too much there. Can everyone see? Okay. A little bit down here, maybe. And then very quickly, I'll go into my turpentine. And I'll let it drip a little bit. And then I will take the straw and blow. It's better to go little by little and repeat and not get too much on there. So I'm gonna go again. And when you're uh, letting it drip down, you know, if you find a, a shape that you like, then don't mess with it. Like I have a big glob right here. If you see it, right there. And I'm gonna do something fun with that. So I'm putting a little more turpentine. And I'm gonna clean off that palette knife real well. I'm gonna blow a little more. See this here I like, I don't know if you can see it up close. See how it has little like open window and kind of marbleized? I won't touch that, that's good. This here is too much of an even, it's too much of a, um, what do you call it? Even line. So all I have to do is break it up with a little bit of turp in there and then I'll put some more, see that looks a little better. Now we're done for now with the gray. And we will use the rosa lila. This is a very pretty color. It's a very soft rose, but it's it's not, how can I explain? It's not really transparent. It's, oof, if I can even get it, get it open. You can tell I haven't been painting a lot because my luster thing is stuck. Let me see if Omar has stronger hands. Omar! Oh, I can't open it. Hold on. Edmo, I mean, family. No way. It's a duro. Yeah. 
We're still trying to get it open. Please bear with us. While he does that, and before my turp and the other luster dry, let's see. Even he can't get it open. But we got this one on it. Let's try and pry it a little bit. I apologize for this delay. That'll teach me next time to open my jars before I start a live video. Got it. Okay. So, I am going to now take out some of the Rosalila. And all these colors that I, I chose uh, work well with each other. They are um, some lusters don't work well don't blend in well so i'm going to now loosen up my little blob that we had down here and the edges here instead of doing the color first like we did with the gray i'm putting a little bit of turp now i'm going i'm dipping it let me use my other hand i'm dipping in just the tip of my palette knife. And then I'm gonna come back here. And right now the, it all looks the same color, I know. But when it's fired, it will look quite nice. And I'm putting a little bit of, since I like the rose and I don't mind if this one carries on, uh, I mean, takes over a little bit or is more predominant than the gray. The gray is just for a little bit of contrast and it's a strong color, so I don't want it to be too intense. Rose, I can never have enough rose. Look, see how interesting that is becoming on the bottom. And this one's m too much of a little spill. So I can go in the opposite direction. Even though I was blowing from top to bottom because we want it to look like it's falling, nothing says we can't redirect some of it. See, this here is a little too thick. That might crackle off. So we come and put a little bit more turpentine. And that looks pretty different, the shape. It's got little, because you want that with the, with lusters you want. See how this is more marbled? So now we have to still work on the top. And this here seems a little bit too, um, too thick, so we can make it a little bit softer. Sometimes I will, um, finish off with a little bit of the 
uh, Mother of Pearl, which that I want to mix together. And then at a second, um, at an, an another fire, pardon me, you can always um, do another uh, coat or layer of Mother of Pearl, and it actually looks a lot nicer. So, for example, up here, I'm going to put, again, the turp first because I want it to be real soft and just kind of merge into each other. And I'm gonna go into the rose. I'm gonna put it on the corner here. And I'm going to let it come off this corner here as well. And now, I'm, without cleaning my palette knife, I'm going to go and take some of the um, the Mother of Pearl and then just come in where I had the, the rose color. And until it's fired, you can't really tell which is which, so just be careful and remember because they're all kind of the same tone. I'm gonna blow a little more. See, that's not attractive, so we'll wipe that out. And here it's dripping on this side. I still haven't decided what I wanted to do with the back, if I was gonna paint more uh, poinsettias, so I'm going to do just these two sides with the luster and then wait, maybe I'll do a, a gold uh, with gold underlay, a poinsettia in gold in the back, just a single one or I, I still haven't decided, but maybe you guys can give me suggestions of what you'd like to see on this piece and we'll do it. So this is where it was lifting off a little bit, so it doesn't matter. I will uh, wipe it off afterwards. One important thing I wanted to um, remind you, if you didn't know, when you use matte paint, like these white um, little shapes of a poinsettia that I made, those... Um, the resist sticks a lot more. It's like luster. If you were gonna mask off luster and do um, red resist, again, we don't like using turp, but it's the only thing. You have to take a little bit of turp on your hand and rub it on. Not too much, but you let it on there and it avoids it from sticking too much. If not, you just can't take it off. It's horrible. So I'm going more into the Mother of Pearl. I don't know if you can see. Maybe if I put this a little further. There. And everyone see okay? Good. So, on the bottom here, I want more Mother of Pearl than any of the stronger colors so that it's kind of like fading off. And the mother of pearl can go on top of the other colors so it doesn't matter if they overlap. And in this case, since I'm going now towards the the side and I don't want it dripping in that direction, I'll work upright. And see, you don't even need a brush for this, it's very loose. I was very fortunate um, that my good friend Valeria Macaluso, she taught me how to do this technique when I went to uh, porcelana Pew 
two, two years ago? Gosh, I'm losing track of time. But she taught me this technique and I've used it a lot. I really like it. It, it makes great backgrounds. It makes things look a little more finished and so right now I'm just adding a little bit of and see how it's dripping right here I like that I like those shapes and I like what happened here see and like with all luster it's always like a surprise once it comes out of the kiln. One thing I'm not liking, you see this line right there? We don't need a, a, a you know, luster is supposed to be soft and flowy. So I think we should just soften that line with a little turpentine. So I'm just going to come in with a turp and I'm going to let it flow. It shouldn't stop right at the corner here. So and at a later fire, if you're really picky like me and you want to add a little bit more, a, a, a touch here and there uh, to let's say the gray or the pink you can when you uh, do luster over luster it really gives a really nice um, result it's more three-dimensional deeper a lot richer see so i brought this one onto that side and see we got rid of that nasty line there up here see that corner wait see that little there I don't like hard lines even in lusters you don't want to have edges so well, just a little more of the turpentine there and see how it broke it up and it made it a little more marbleized? I don't know if you can see well. But now we don't have that sharp edge. Now, when I masked the top of the vase, I was very careful. I don't know if you can see, but little details pay attention when you're masking stuff off because it'll show out up when you fire. I round it off the corners wait i don't know if i can do this i don't know how clear that is but i i went with an exacto knife and rounded off the corners because square pointy corners are not very attractive and you don't want that outlined oh thank you masumi Let's see. I still feel... Yes, me too, Bella. We really had a beautiful trip planned, but hopefully when we can travel again, we'll plan an even better one. Oh, thank you. Hi, Stefania. Long time no see. So... I think that for now that's all I would do with the, the the luster and I can blow dry it or wait patiently until all of this um, really dries because if I pull it off now it will um, it will go on to the paint I still will have to clean up with a little bit of, of turp um on places where it will get under the under the resist so but that i have a, a synthetic brush my old faithful this 
is so old, but it works so well. I just dip it in the in the paint thinner, and then I'll clean all the edges once I peel off the resist. And I don't know if you have them available where you you're located, but I use these manicure little pump bottles for my um, paint thinner, and then I can just go in there and push and you know get the what i need and then clean off it it works really really nice and it doesn't evaporate so just an idea so i think this is as far as we get on this except here no 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 that's too straight let's just do a little more on this side and we'll start on the top so it drips and now again, I'm putting the turpentine first. The reason I did the luster first when I went around the centers of the flowers in here with the gray and I put the luster on first is because since it's supposed to be the background, I wanted it to be a little deeper. So I purposely did the luster first so I could um, make it a little more solid but the rest of it if you've noticed i've just been putting the turp on first and then i go and add a little bit of the and you don't want even shapes remember and here i could put a little bit this is the the rose the rosa lila i could do a little bit here on the top to have a little bit of a darker tone up here and then just let it let it flow and get rid of hard lines like this one and I'm still gonna So that it looks like it's coming over from from the front we don't want it to be too that it just stops there a little more turp Blow a little. Little more turp. You don't really have to mess too much with it. I tend to be one of those china painters that picks until I ruin it. So since it's supposed to have organic flowing shapes, try not to work it too much like I do. But if you see a hard line like right here, see, you don't want that on the edge. You want it to be more, you know, feathered out or blended. And as soon as I'm done with this, I will be glad to answer any questions. There, I think that's enough. What do you think? We got some nice shapes. 
some nice drips. Look at that. Let's see, when I did the seminar with Peter Faust, I think we did the, let me see, let me read this comment. When we did the seminar with Peter Faust, I think we did the lusters first. I don't remember for sure, but I think so. We traced our design, did the resist over, and then did the lusters. Is there a difference? Uh, very good question. No. Um, depending on what you're going to be painting, if you put the luster on first, remember the paint is going to come out different if you paint over luster. But depending on what kind of design you're doing, um, I did um, a class with Peter, and yes, we did the, the luster first. I did another class with him where we did the painting first, and then we did the, the luster last. But since this one is kind of drippy and messy, and you want to know where you're going to be... Uh, putting the color specifically. If you don't mind, if you just want to do a, like a general background and then just cut out the shapes there. But I knew I wanted my flowers on this position and I wanted the darker gray in here. The darker gray is in here and I put a little bit down there. We got the rose up here and then we have the mother of pearl which is almost uh white on the rest so i tend to say there are no rules in porcelain painting and um specifically for that reason if you noticed just for that on purpose i painted only two poinsettias because we always hear that Oh, threes and fives. I don't believe in rules when it comes to art. I believe in suggestions. Um, you can, of course, you find what is easier for you. I liked the two flowers and maybe I'll put one in the back and that, that'll be three. But I, I look at all those rules as suggestions for aesthetics but whatever works for you. There's uh, the only thing about putting the luster on first is that if you're gonna paint over it, you're gonna be able to see through it, which you know, um, Benoit from France, he used to make these beautiful portraits over luster. Also, Mina Berthet. And those were fabulous because you could see the luster underneath and they were black and white portraits so whatever works for you in this particular case we're going to say for me it worked out better like this so is there any other question oh thank you Naveen Shukran bizaf. Alpha alpha shukran. Hola Gabriela. Hi Lamia. Hi Kim. Hi Val Valerie. Gracias, Daniela. Me alegro. Hi, Jerry. California misses you. Hola, Marisa. Oh, we have a lot of people. Let me say hi to everyone. I don't want to be rude. Hi, Annalie. Hi, Joanna. Elsie. Hola. Hola. 
Hi, Ingrid. Ay, Cris. Cuánto tiempo sin verte. Un fuerte abrazo. We miss you. Hi, Catherine. Alice, hi. Hola, Rocío. Olivia. Alma, ¿cómo estás? Cecilia, ¿cómo estás? Hi, how are you? Joyti. Well, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, let me know before we finish our video what you would like to see done on the wrist. If we should do chip off, if we should do some relief, if we should do some of those little glass beads or if you want me to put everything on it because Christmas is supposed to be kitsch and busy. So I did think that we could do the center in here, all of this in liquid bright gold or Roman gold. I'm, I'm not sure yet, but please give me your su suggestions on what you would like to see. Amelia, ciao cara, bachi, Joyti, you are like me, I think everything too, <laughs> I like busy, oh thank you Masumi, well with that said, I will wish you a happy Saturday. And, um, oh yes, Bella mentioned uh, platinum. I had already thought about platinum because we put that gray and I did that on purpose because this vase is in uh, cool colors. So I think platinum would also look very, very pretty. So, I might even get, depending on how this fires, if this isn't dark enough for me right in here, I might put a little bit of black luster in there. So, this is why it takes me so long to do pieces. I'm a slow painter because I like to put a lot of details on stuff. And I, once the piece is done, I'm done with it. For me, the fun part is creating it and in creating my own design. I usually create the design as I go, whatever seems good to my eye. I do sketch out sometimes the general idea of what I want. For example, here, I had just drew how the poinsettia leaves kind of sit on top of each other because I had never painted a poinsettia. It's not one of my favorite flowers. And um, so I wanted to practice and to see, I actually went to the store and looked at them, how they, the flowers basically like leaves. So that's how that came about. But then when I come to placement, I don't draw on my piece. I don't, I freehand everything. It, it, kind of just comes as it flows with the design. And that's why it also takes me a little time because I have to try and see. Um, to see if it, it looks good and I can take it off if it doesn't. And sometimes I try several things. So for me, it is also a learning piece and it trains my eye to see what's pleasing and what isn't and I have a lot of fun doing it because it's like hit or miss and it's it, like I said it, it takes me a while because I'll be messing around with what I'm gonna put down here or 
like I had thought to put the little gold uh, poinsettias right in the back here, or maybe just outlined or using the, um, what do you call that? The gold underlay. We could do that. I could also have some of the very thin uh, relief or paste like drops with a little dot on the bottom, just dripping like Christmas ornaments. I mean, there's all sorts of fun things we could do. So, oh yes. Si, sí, Olivia, me encanta la idea. Olivia Mareiro from Switzerland is suggesting that we do some gold with the poinsettias and yeah i think gold is very christmasy and i think gold and platinum would be fun um let's see over here oh yes bella see it looks kind of like an etching doesn't it one thing i needed to remind you when you do the matte paint don't sand it after you fire it it's not as it doesn't adhere it doesn't go under the glaze like our regular porcelain paint so it's fired see it's really this you can't it's hard but if you sand it it'll you'll be able to see a little bit of the glaze underneath so you fire and you just leave that alone Remember how we had a couple of little pieces that the outline sticker had come uh, come up? Well, I fixed it with that little teeny um, wipeout tool. And uh, you can't really tell. It took forever, but the result is, is clean and is what I was looking for. See how... I'm going to come closer, move the phone. See how this, once it's fired, it's going to look quite nice. See how it looks marbled? And right now it looks like all one color. But once it's fired, you know, we have the pinks, we have the grays. And I brought it over to this side a little bit. And if you, the reflection doesn't really help. Okay, here, if you see on this side here, we have more of the, I did the pink up here and then I went down with the mother of pearl, but even the mother of pearl, I watered down to almost nothing with the turpentine. And then we have the little drips here and a, a pocket, like a, a hole there. That looks really nice once it's fired. So, I won't keep you all anymore. Go enjoy your Saturday. Go paint. Go do something fun. And hopefully, maybe in a couple of days, or depending on how anxious I get, we'll be able to fire it tonight or tomorrow. And um, we can move on to the next step. When it comes out of the kiln, I will take a picture. And I also will take a picture um, once I take the the resist so that you can see it with the luster without the, the resist. And then you'll see it fired. Okay, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. I know weekends are busy for everyone, but I really appreciate it. Gracias a todas por darme su tiempo. Pasen un lindo fin de semana. Y... Um, pinten, hagan algo divertido. Las veo pronto. Bye bye. And to my Italian friends, ciao, bellas. Bye bye.